Well, hello everyone. Now, I've done a lot of videos about IGBTs. Today I'm going to be doing another one, but this one's not going to be specifically about IGBTs. One video that I haven't done covering one of the most important aspects of IGBT actually is not have anything to do with the IGBT itself. It actually has to do with something we call the freewheeling diode. Now, some people call it by a different name, a flyback diode or many different other ones, but before we jump in and start talking about what a freewheeling diode is and what it does, there's something that I want to show you. Okay guys, I have an IGBT chopper switching a resistive load that is 25 ohms and a bus voltage here. So according to that, the peak current should only be about 13 amps, maybe a tiny bit more. But, as you'll notice, I have two channels here. The scope is watching channel 1 and channel 2. Now channel 1 I'm going to turn off and focus on channel 2 for a moment. <clears throat> now that is 200 millivolts per division. That is connected to a current shunt which will output 100 millivolts when there's 20 amps flowing through it. So do the math real quick. You can say that that's probably a lot higher than 13 amps flowing across that shunt. Now we'll go back to channel 1 and turn channel 2 off. This is the IGBT's collector emitter voltage trace and you can see it starts up here at the bus voltage and falls nicely all the way down to the IGBT's saturated voltage. So it doesn't really make sense that when we're driving a resistive load, turn channel 2 back on, that we'd be getting that big giant current spike. So just real quick, this is zero current. The current rises up, falls down, and it resumes its normal current. So, what is with that giant current spike during turn on? That actually is caused by the freewheeling diode because there's no way a resistor that has a static resistance is just going to suddenly cause more current to flow. There's no inductance or capacitance or anything funny going on. It's just an electric heater. So, the freewheeling diode has something called reverse recovery charge and that is what we're going to talk about today along with other things about the freewheeling diode that are very important when you use an IGBT. As I said, we will talk about the diode, one of the most important aspects when it comes to IGBTs and MOSFETs alike, but doesn't actually have anything to do with the actual IGBT. It's just something that we use alongside of it to help it switch certain loads, but it also causes problems like this. So before I get too ahead of myself, stand by, we're going to cut to another clip. Now some of you may remember a video I did a while ago about using an IGB cho IGBT chopper to drive a DC motor, and I stressed the importance of a freewheeling diode. But what exactly is a freewheeling diode? In the diagram of the IGBT chopper, I have the freewheeling diode here, highlighted in green. You'll notice that it is on the upper stage of an IGBT that's actually shorted out, so the IGBT in this setup is actually not doing anything. We're just using this diode. And you'll notice it's in anti-parallel with the load. So what does this diode, what we call the freewheeling diode, actually do? Well, when an IGBT, or any switch for that matter, drives an inductive load, like for example a DC motor, or a relay coil, contactor coil, anything like that, whenever the IGBT switches on, it charges up the load's inductance. When the IGBT switches off, if we didn't have the freewheeling diode, the load's inductance would attempt to discharge through the IGBT, creating a very high voltage spike. So, when the load is switched off, when the IGBT switches off, the diode does what they call catches the load or clamps the load's inductance so that the IGBT won't experience a very high voltage spike. So, when this IGBT turns off, the load's induct inductance will discharge through the freewheeling diode. So, the freewheeling diode takes the inductance as current rather than voltage. So, what's the deal with the diode creating a high turn on current. Well, the waveform would look something like this. 
when the gate driver turns the IGBT back on again, you'll notice the IGBT's current is initially high and then, then falls and then continues to ramp up as it charges the load inductance. And that's because of what we call reverse recovery. Traditional silicon diodes do something interesting. When they're in their blocking state, it takes some actual charge to get them into their conducting state. And likewise, when they're in their conducting state, it takes some actual charge to get them back into their blocking state. So when the IGBT switches off, the freewheeling diode here is conducting current. It's carrying the load's inducti inductive charge as current. When the IGBT switches back on, we want the freewheeling diode to return to the blocking state. In order to do that, some current must flow through the IGBT to cause the freewheeling diode to return back to its blocking state. That's called reverse recovery charge. And it can be seen here on this diagram, the reverse recovery current flowing through the diode and flowing through the IGBT. And that's what causes the current spike when the IGBT turns on. Now, important I have to say that it is actual charge, not just current. That means if we turn on the IGBT very quickly, the peak current will be very high, but the duration of the peak current won't be very long. Now, if we turn on the IGBT slower, the duration of the current will be longer, but it won't peak as high. So, that's the freewheeling diode. That's what it does. And that's why it causes this kind of nasty current spike during turn. So a fairly recent innovation is called a silicon carbide diode. Instead of making the diodes out of regular silicon that has a really high charge, they're now trying to make diodes out of silicon carbide, which doesn't have as much charge. That means, as you can see here, the reverse recovery current of the standard diodes pretty high because they have a pretty high charge, but the silicon carbide diode in black doesn't have the same charge, so it doesn't really take much to make it transition from blocking to conducting or vice versa. But what's really sig what is the significance of this really because it all just looks like a bunch of lines on the graph? Well that means any sort of IGBT, cir IGBT circuit that uses a freewheeling diode like a chopper for example, an inverter for example, any kind of motor control, it uses some of the electricity that you provide it with just to make the diode go back into its blocking state. So it's actually wasting a fairly significant amount of energy. Using a silicon carbide diode means that you're actually saving